I went to an art school, so I went to Pro Arte Alphen Park. Ooh, I was mm-hmm. at NSA. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Right, girls. girls. Hey. <laughs> Oh, okay. you guys did not like us. No, we didn't. We didn't even visit. And it was just like no. one highway on them. <laughs> we Park. felt like there's Are only one art school, only yeah. it's the National School of the Arts. But look what Pro Arte you guys has were, produced. You guys act like the Vatican. <laughs> I can't do no small talk. No, no small talk. I'm not with the small talk. Can't be with the small talk. She is a lover of art, music, and architecture. She is a visionary. It is orchestra, conductor, extraordinaire, offensive piece on the show. Welcome to Unscripted. Thank you for having me. It is so lovely to finally get to sit down with you because I've actually, over the phone and on mm-hmm. radio, spoken to you a couple of times. And so now to like, finally get you sitting here is amazing. You've been very busy. I've been very busy. Is this <laughs> the biggest, busy. busiest time of your career? Yes, this season is actually my season. Oh, I love that. It really is my season. So from, I would say, beginning of the year up until July is when a lot of things are happening for me. I find it funny that you say that because you've got such a big title behind your name. You are the first and youngest black woman Mm -hmm. to own and conduct a fully black owned orchestra, a fully black orchestra in uh, the continent. Mm -hmm. That's already such a big thing. So somebody would assume that it's been your season the whole time. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, right. But I mean, the climate of South Africa is not the same as Europe. So in Europe, you have a conductor who has like an entire calendar from 2024 up until like July of 2025, right? That's the standard. But because the orchestra and theater space is not as involved or as inclusive in South Africa, we don't really have that. How? What's it going to take for us to get there? To like get people going to the theater, whether it is to experience mm. a play, to experience a dance show, to experience the orchestra. What do you think it's going to take to really make mm. South Africans get into the culture of theater going? I believe it has to start from the top, right? Okay. So... Um, the the evidence of how this should be done is from the the Europeans. So Berlin, countries such as Australia, um, Germany have a culture within the government where the government actually fuels into the arts. Okay. Right. So there's a there's an entire mandate that the government has to ensure that a kid learns how to play an instrument. And then from there, when they decide to actually pursue this professionally, they get paid. So there's a profession in 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 um. Europe with when it comes to orchestra, even in the US, a big, big, big um, sort of like a space and environment for that. So South Africa has to, it has to start from the top where our government actually funds these things, right? Because I think it's it's important to realize that I started when I was 12 years old yeah. and if it was not for that, I would not have gotten the understanding or the knowledge for, for, for music and classical music and instruments if it wasn't for that. So it has to start early. So many people will maybe experience classical music in high school or in varsity mm. and then they come across people like you who mm. have actually been playing the trumpet or whatever other instruments since they were 12 years old and they realize I'm actually so behind. (laughs) Growing up in Pretoria, I'm from Pretoria as well. Where Ah, where Pretoria are you from? I'm from Abopani. Oh, I'm from Sasha. (laughs) (laughs) I'm from Sasha Ngube. Now, when I think of Nguayana Wako, Mabopani, Wako Pitokia, I imagine somebody growing up with R&B, maybe with some jazz, Mm -hmm. maybe growing up with your Dolly Parton, Whitney Houston. That's the stereotype that I imagine, right? Yeah. I, I don't ever imagine a 12-year-old Wako Mobopani listening to classical music or picking up a trumpet at 12 mm-hmm. years old. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was the influence and the musical influence from your family like and them being involved in sal- the Salvation Army, I hear? Yeah. How does that all come together and influence you to get into classical music? Interestingly enough, I think the first musical sponge I got yeah. was not from classical music. Oh, yeah? It was from the OJs, the okay. Commodores, Fights and Temptations. You know, okay. the parties that you our see. mothers used to go yeah. to. So imagine as a baby, you are in a car on a continental pillow going to Zone AED on a Saturday. And, you know, you yeah. have all of these aunties looking nice. You listen to that music, right? And that was the soundtrack of my of my formative years. Okay. So in that music, you hear a lot of orchestration 
and a lot of bands, you know, like a lot of dynamics that relate to orchestrated music, whether it's a jazz band, whether it's it's an orchestra. So Quincy Jones does it a lot mm. in the music that he arranges, even Motown. So the spinners have a lot of ba 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 da yes. da da da. So that's literally that's a brass line. That's a brass line, right? So it's this knowledge I only got to understand when I was like, ah, oh, what I'm learning theoretically, I've been listening to since I was a baby. Oh, you All grew right? up with that exactly. Music. So I wasn't listening to I'm a Barbie girl. <laughs> In a Spice Spice Girl. Girl. <laughs> exactly. And Britney so, Spears and Christina no, Aguilera. That missed me. That missed me. I only was like, oh, there's a Britney Spears. It was only after, but the bug really hit me with 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 Motown. Yeah. Motown music that had a lot of orchestral um influences in it. And then when I became involved in the church, it was you had to read the music. So it was very classical. It was very brass band. It was mm. very marches and stuff. And then that was what I spent most of my time doing. So how do you pick up a trumpet at 12 years old? Was that through the church or how did that happen? Definitely through the, the church. So the Salvation Army had like a missionary church thing about it where okay. they, they, they they give off a skill just to preach the word and whatever. So for me, because my family was always in church from Tuesday until Sunday, they oh. there. So I was like, I need to do something <laughs> during the time because this is boring, right? <laughs> and then there was like a, an abundance of, of, of instruments at church and... I remember just seeing the brass band and then being like, sure, I don't see a girl doing this. Oh. And then when, you know, the, the the pastor at the time was like, listen, Tuesday, whoever wants to learn how to play these instruments come through on Tuesday. I was like, oh, actually, let me see what this is all about. And then I went there on Tuesday, learned how to play the C scale and the rest was history. That's incredible. But what I what grabs my attention is the fact that when you were that young, looking at the brass band at church and realizing there's no girl mm. is no different to what you experienced now exactly right mm -hmm. which uh, the space that you play is still so male dominated so mm -hmm. do you constantly feel like throughout your career and even while growing up you've had to prove yourself as a woman you've had mm -hmm. to be the only woman what have been some of the challenges in this male dominated space I would say the resilience of my and my feistiness comes from my mom oh. right so I don't remember her telling me what she wanted me to be Okay. You know, like parents would be like, you need to be a lawyer. Yeah. Yes, Kolo, you must be a lawyer. Or a doctor. You must be a doctor. And all, yes. you know, have all those cardiovascular jargons and stuff just so that they can prove to, to, to their friends in the in the neighborhood that my, my kid did something. My mom, I would wake up some days, I just want to be a dolphin today. And then she would just facilitate that. Okay, do you want coloring pencils? Is it a coloring book thing? Do you want pages to draw? So she always allowed me to color beyond the the lines, right? So that's why even in my evolution um, as, as a creative, it was always from a... Because my mom believed in me, even when there are men around me, I'm just like, okay, but since I was a baby, there was never a... You have to do this. So there was never confinement yeah. in my whole life. But... In terms of the male dominance of the industry, it comes from architecture. So beyond me just being a conductor as well, I'm an architect. Yeah. So you can imagine on site, you're seeing these sure. males who are telling you how to mix mud with, with, with cement and stuff. And they want to prove that they know how to do it. So you have to come and be like, no, this is the aggregate. This is this. This is that. And sometimes overperform. Because you have to assert your position in your mm. place. So I've had to do that oftentimes and it, it kind of takes a lot. But how I counteract that is try to be ready. I try to be oh, that's beautiful. high level and best level as, as possible. So I preempt the, the things that will go wrong during a rehearsal. So, there's so no what one are will some, of, some of the things that could go wrong, for example? So for example, the orchestra is... is, is, is full of people who are classically trained not yeah. only that they are well traveled these guys have been to Italy they've been to Germany they've been to Austria so they have more knowledge than I do in mm. terms of the practicality of music so seeing an offense she's female she looks good sometimes it can come across as she's just a pretty face right mm. so it's a Sometimes they'll want to check you with something, right? So they'll look at the score and ask you a question that is so deeply rooted, it has nothing to do with the music, right? Sure. To check what you know. So I preempt that, okay, this may, may happen during rehearsals. They may ask me this, they may ask me that. They may, they may find it difficult to play a certain phrase in music because they are used to playing Mozart. So if I want you to jazz it up, or to swing, mm. right? They're going to find it difficult because it's going to be like, Ugh, but that's how we play, you know, because they, yeah. they're well-traveled. Yeah. They are the the sought-after of sought-after. So you have to be like, no, actually, this is how I need you to play. So 
I always preempt the things that could go wrong. So, so I always you negatives. have been assertive literally since you were a little girl and you've never Correct. had to... Uh, have you had problems with having to be nice? Because girls <laughs> are taught to be nice. We're taught to be... As much as we're taught to be assertive, mm. and especially if you have a feisty mom, yeah. you grow up being assertive, but mm. somehow we get into workspaces, we grow up a little bit, and you almost feel like you have to play nice, you have to be yeah. the good girl. Uh, when you are leading an entire orchestra, have you had to balance being nice offensive and being leader offensive? I found it very difficult, right? Because by nature, I'm I'm a I'm so soft, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm soft. I'm the basic Cancerian that oh, you can find yes, y'all are on God's earth, right? <laughs> I am yo. So I've had to, and thank God I have an amazing team who knows when to chip it on certain things, right? I'm a very, uh, I get scared first of all because. I conduct most of the time people I look up to, (laughs) which is crazy. I conduct my heroes. Sure. Right? So sometimes you have to tell your hero that, "Uh uh-uh, I don't want it in that way. Or I need more fortissimo. You know, I need it to be softer. I need to be louder. And it it must not come from a, okay, who's this girl? It has to come from a, this is a space. I'm the conductor right now, right? Yeah. But then after that, you're just like, oh, did I just talk to that trombonist like <laughs> that? This guy has five albums. Who do I think I am? So it, it, it takes a switching. So there's a position I have to take even before rehearsal. So I, I make sure I arrive like an hour at least okay. before going to rehearsal to assert myself in the space. I've heard that you yes. are quite an early <laughs> Who told you person. That? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I am. I am I've so I've actually heard that about I mean, mm-hmm. it didn't happen today, unfortunately. <laughs> I know it wasn't your fault. <laughs> Sorry, guys. But I've actually been told yeah. that you are that person that arrives early before everybody else. Yeah, definitely. So I make sure that I have to I have to walk barefoot in this space to just get myself okay. into it because there's a certain switch that has to happen after it's like, ah, oh, you guys doing? And then I'm on my podium and then it's like. What is walking barefoot doing at that moment? What does it do for you? Does it ground you? Is it mm. your ritual to prepare? Yeah, it's my prayer. Okay. I have to pray. I have to fetch. I have to fetch the spirit from somewhere because yes. most of the time I'm like, how did I get here, right? Um, there's a preparation that I go through and I make sure that I'm ready. But there's oftentimes a, they could have gotten anyone for this because I've done me. a, they could have gotten a lot of, uh, they could have gotten anyone um, for this in, in a lot of my projects. So I have to acquaint myself with the space, believe that I'm worthy and I, I deserve to be there because that's the important thing if i don't believe that i'm supposed to be here you will see it will reflect on my body because yeah. my body is the extension of the baton right so i make sure that i have to touch the space spiritually before the musicians get there it reminds me of beyonce and how she switches into session yes. yes. yeah but then when she talks she's like the most socially awkward person there on god's go. green earth right exactly uh-huh yeah being the first person to do anything whether it's the first woman the first black person whatever mm. it is comes with a lot of pressure and responsibility and power as well. Mm -hmm. Do you feel pressure to bring people along with you? Because I know that you are quite passionate about inclusivity, Mm. about bringing people from disenfranchised backgrounds into the classical music space. Mm -hmm. But what is that pressure like of bringing people with you so that you are no longer the first black girl to do something? I mean, the the title of first has been something that I've tried to run away from, yeah, right? I can imagine. Because it's like, yo, okay, who are, where, where are the rest? Mm. And what are we doing about the, the, the rest, right? Because there's also an inclination to want to settle on first. So because you're the first, you're not going to do the work. Ooh. Because the title's already there. I don't have to get the great mentors to teach mm. me how to, how, how to be better at this. So I've had to um, sometimes shove the first and want to be a great conductor, period. Okay. Right. But then there's the survivor's guilt, right, of the fact that I come from Mabopani, you know, I come from the hood. Mm. So I know what it means for someone who wants to do music, but they can't afford to have a, a piano, an upright piano in mm. their house. Like, I'm sure you've never heard of anyone no. having a piano in the house. No. Ever, right? So I didn't imagine. grow up going to people's houses I, who have pianos. No. I still get shocked when I yes. go into people's houses and they actually have instruments. Exactly. I'm like, you have a guitar? Exactly. Because <laughs> it's something that we're not um, used to seeing. Yeah. Even because from where we come from, it's like, that thing is loud you know mm. warasa and all that it's expensive exactly it's very expensive so i've 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 had to um first of all get over the survivor's guilt yeah. of having to be the outlier because for most part i've had to leave majida 
behind. Mm. I've had to leave the same people that I started with behind, not from a, I don't believe in the vision anymore, but sometimes we vibrate on different frequencies, right? I can have a mindset of, I want to be the first one in, last one out with everything that I do. And you have people who get to a point where they get tired of that or they don't see the vision anymore yeah. because now it's not, we're not just talking about this in a small classroom. Like now we are here, right? So it's been quite hard to to take the people, like all of the people that I started with. There's some who are still there, but to the heartbreak and the heartache of having to leave some people behind because it's evolving. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I'm evolving. And it's the mm. odds as well. Exactly. You know, they are the talented few. They mm. are the lucky few. What is your definition of success, right? Because some people are like, oh, you've got to work hard. Mm. But sometimes it's timing, right? Mm. The, it's the family you are born into. You happen to be born in a family that was part of the Salvation Army. Mm. Then there was the church. There were the instruments. Mm. They said, here are lessons. So yeah. There was already an opportunity for you. Yeah. Uh, do you think success is just purely based on vision and hard work? Or do you believe that it's luck, it's opportunity and so many other mm -hmm. things? How would you define success? 10,000 hours. Yes. <laughs> right? Have you it read Outliers? Outliers. Not yet, but I've, you I've are such such an outlier. Huh? Like I've had like snippets of it. I, I need to get it. Okay, that book, Oof. it defines you really? in a way. Pretty yeah, Because you are, it's, it's called Outliers mm -hmm. and you are an outlier that's mm -hmm. had the 10,000 hours. <laughs> and even when you're on the 10,000, right, you're still looking for the next 10,000, right? There we go. Um, I would say that, shoo, how do I even answer Success. this question? You have to put in the work. Yeah. The difficult thing with my life story is I've always been hard working or always high level, always you only have one shot. And even the way I was raised, I was raised with a you only have one shot sure. so make sure that you don't lose a sock at school make sure you don't lose your jersey don't lose a pencil don't lose a pen because we cannot get another one right so what that does is that it keeps you on your toes right and you have to now always be assertive in wherever you are so that you don't deal with loss you're always attaining sure. the things that you have to attain. So when you don't get the things that you want to attain, how have you dealt with disappointment in your life? Because being that high functioning and being that successful mm. and being that brilliant at what you do, you're still going to experience disappointment. You're still going to experience not being the best mm. when you walk into a room. Mm -hmm. uh, you're still going to experience lows and days yeah. where you don't want to show up as your best. How do you deal with that? <sighs> Those days have me down 7 mil like you. <laughs> I'm tough for like a week because I'm just like I don't understand how I didn't win. Yeah, I just don't. It's 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 a it's a it's a hard wiring or rewiring when I don't win. Actually, sure, it's hard to not win. Honestly, it is. So I drive myself crazy to ensure that I am overly ready and I am overly prepared because I don't want to deal with your. I, I wasn't ready for that or a loss. It's very hard for me to deal with, with not winning. Tell me about the lowest you've felt in terms of your music. Like whether it was a performance that you did and you weren't really happy about it or something that you really feel like, oh, yeah, mm. this one, in Shapile 7 meal for real. <laughs> <laughs> but you rose from yeah. it. Do you have a moment like that in your career? Hmm... I have a first moment. Yeah. And I'm wondering if there's a second one. I'm trying to fetch the second one. That's when you know you're brilliant. <laughs> there's the first one. and Okay, the first one was... So the first grand show that I had, right? Yeah. 2019. Um, at the Joburg Theatre. Mm -hmm. So this was a, a spectacle. I was like, ah... I'm finally doing this, right? Finally doing this. The whole dream of having an, an all-black orchestra and a youth choir, it's coming yeah. and falling into place. And unfortunately, the sponsor at the time who had said, listen, what do you need? Ah, don't worry, I got you. Went AWOL, oh, MIA, right. right? And I had my heroes as part of the show, mm. right? And the show was good, but I was, I rested on the fact that this sponsor went MIA, Again, to the point that I always want to ensure that I am so brilliant at what I do that even the thing that I cannot control, 
I want to still control. Sure. So that broke me. And I was I was gone from this space for a very long time. And it was I think a few months after that where someone was like, no, you have to come back. And I was like, ah, but that was the first low where I just felt like I'm letting people down. But the inverse of that is like, no, but I made it happen, even though there was the backlash of that. But shucks, all these black bodies in this one of the best theaters in Africa doing Zilegas Kumalo's Isbon Oh my Are you word. serious? Like we're finally doing it. Is that the show you want to take to the Sydney Opera House? Yes. Oh my goodness. That is the show. How's that dream coming oh. along? Because it's something you always mention. Every time. Every time. Right? And mm-hmm. I feel like the day it happens, everybody's mm-hmm. going to be like, oh my goodness, she mm-hmm. actually really did it. Yeah. It's been a North Star. Also because my position in classical music has been to highlight African music because yeah. I believe that sound jumped off in Africa. Like no one can tell me otherwise. Mm. But we have this... Um, way of looking at the supremacy of Western music that we don't look at. Hang on, there's an entire oratorio, an entire opera that was written to highlight the life of the greatest warrior of our sure. time. Are you serious? Like, how, how is not how how is this not at the Royal Albert Hall at the Sydney Opera House? So that's the one I speak about all the time. That's yeah. my north star. Yeah. How does architecture and music come together? Because I find it so fascinating mm-hmm. that you are an architect and you are a music conductor as well how do those worlds Mm -hmm. collide and how does one inspire the other interestingly interestingly enough I went to an art school so I went to Pro Arte Elfin Park oh I was Mm -hmm. at NSA really right girls girls. (laughs) (laughs) oh you guys did not like us no we didn't even the visit and it was just like one highway on them (laughs) we felt like there's only one art school only it's the National School of the Arts but look what Pro Arte has produced you guys act like the Vatican (laughs) (laughs) you honestly act like the Vatican but okay it's fine Um, (laughs) no but your school is brilliant because look at you yes they are going to pro art as well, yes, if I'm not mistaken. There's yeah. a lot of these, you know, very successful um, creatives that went to pro art actually. Yeah. So, I mean, art school, subject choices, right? Yeah. What are you doing? You know, there's art, there's music, there is dance, there's hospitality and stuff. So, I wanted, initially, I actually wanted to do music. Because mm. remember now, um, I've been playing the trumpet since I was 12. Yes. So, me wanting to do music was based on the fact that I was like, oh, art school. Finally, there's a piano here. Yes. Right? So, went to Pro Arte, and I just was like, I wanted to just touch the piano, honestly, right? And the head boy at the time came, came. I think he passed by, and then he was like, what are you doing here? In a very, like, this is not your space. Like, this is not your place. And I was just like, um, I just wanted to, you know, to see it. And then he was like, you don't belong here. Something Oof. like that. And that scarred me. So, subsequently, I had to take art. What? Yes. So art had history of art, architecture, um, painting, printmaking, and then grade twelve came and it was like, okay, subject choices. Yes. I can't do music. Music it 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 requires me to have done at least piano. Of course. So now I had to go for architecture. I find that so wild. How does the architecture influence your music? Do you ever mm-hmm. take inspiration from your art as an architecture when you are thinking of your harmonies and symphonies Mm. there you go actually so the principles that i learned in architecture are very much connected to music okay so you mentioned harmony yeah architecture has harmony oh there's technique architecture has technique there's rhythm architecture has rhythm right there's structure architecture has structure yeah so the way in which i have built my world even the way i look at a score i literally look at it architecturally so i compartmentalize things like i'm like okay first violins there's this section i put it here and then i'm like okay strings put it here these are my you know this is my entertainment area this is my lounge okay what is in the middle my middle is my lounge okay so i have to have a pronounced entrance so from the door what do you see and after you move from the door what happens do you go upstairs is it a double volume area or is it just like single volume what is the what is the glazing like? What are the finishes? Is the floor to ceiling heights? Okay. Or, so I literally think of music architecturally, and yes. I think that's why I'm I'm as animated and as passionate because I can literally imagine like a contemporary house happening when I'm doing Mozart. That is incredible. Mm. Talking about doing Mozart, now you've decided that huh, this could work with Ama Piano. Mm. There is a really big show that is coming up with Gabs at a small. Absolutely yeah. insane how the tickets sold out so quickly. Why do you think people were so so excited for the idea of 
one of the biggest Amapiano DJs mm. collaborating with one of the most famous music conductors on our continent mm. and piano being seen on stage with an orchestra. Why do you think people were so excited about that when mm. we're not very exposed to classical music? I think it was the representation. Yeah. I feel like when people saw that, it was like a, a shock to the system and they were like, there's no way in our lifetime we are seeing this, we have to be a part of this. So okay. I think it was that. Because number one, like we were saying in the beginning, theater culture is not that prominent mm. in South Africa. Ex in fact, it's non-existent, to be quite honest, right? Yeah. So to see the juxtaposition of these soft instruments with this lock drum genre, <laughs> right? You mean? This lock drum wait. genre. It's just like... <laughs> There's no way. How is she going to do it? So I think it, it came from, from, from that. The representation was so powerful that people were like, ah, ask no questions to the point that it shocked us the, the reception that we got yeah. from people and people wanting us to do like an entire tour. People wanted us to, to, to take it to like a stadium. And I was like, sure. So there's a, a need to see two people from the hood who really made it out musically yes. and defied all odds. Oh my word. And you both right? from Pretoria. This is beautiful. Exactly, right? So defying all odds and being put on this high level stage where we can both share our like the, the, the brilliant of what music means to us so it's it's been a humbling and a and an and honorable thing for me to be mm. picked they could have taken anyone to be quite honest but i mean they could have taken anyone Karabo. but it's you yes but they could have had anyone is what i'm saying <laughs> so that's why when i when i get into um such projects i don't look at it as ah oh, it's just a piano so oh, we can just do some basic conducting i look at it as okay if i was doing beethoven's ninth symphony I have to approach it with the same vigor and, you know, I have to be as ready and as equipped because it's such an important thing, especially now, 30 years of, of, of freedom as well. Yeah. And you have this genre which has taken from the quiet door and deep house sort of like era. I feel like every big moment in South Africa or era was for the youth. Absolutely. And right. defined exactly. by an era. I think bubblegum mm. music way before our time. Yes. And then I think Kwaito in the 90s, mm. we were still quite young then. Mm. I'm thinking I'm a piano right exactly. now. Yeah. Defines so, an era. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine that we are defining an era right now. Sure. So it's quite patriotic for me to be doing this right now now and collaborating with an amazing phenomenal perfectionist of a musician and maybe i'm a piano but let me tell you gabza will take time on one song to make sure that it's as ready and as polished for me to go orchestrate and arrange it so that's also for me something that's really really great i mean and i am trying to imagine like an i'm a piano producer and dj mm. collaborating with somebody who has done classical music all their lives are you guys learning a lot from each other musically mm. Yes. Um, there's, there's a few things that we pointed to each other. So our session was very, it wasn't via email. It was really, we had to be in the same space. Yeah. So I had to be in a studio. We, we, we had to look at what the show means to both of us. Yeah. Right. And then come up with the story. Mm -hmm. Right. So then the story was like, okay, Gabza, you have a catalog, man. <laughs> we only have like two hours. So we have to pick great songs from your catalog, but what are we trying to tell? So we both weaved in the storyline from the beginning that, okay, this is where we start. This is like a house. This is where yeah. we start from the house. You know, this is the driveway. There's the and architecture. Then, you know, exactly, this is your driveway. This is your there lounge. This is your entertainment area. So we weaved those things in and it was interesting because there were certain songs we would play. I'd be like, oh, this is what this instrument is. He was like, what? This is just a plug-in. Oh, and what? I'm just like, no, this is a bassoon, right? <laughs> and there was even one song where I was like, I need the songs to be part of the, the, the set list we're doing. It was like, but wow, I was like, I hear woodwinds, I hear an oboe and a, and a bassoon and a, and a flute and a clarinet. And I had to explain what that is. So you can imagine, he's just creating music from a producer point of view. But with me and my ear, I was like, these are the instruments that I identified in these songs, right? And that is the magic of this collaboration that we were teaching each other some stuff. You know, you said it, it, they could have chosen anybody else, but they chose you. Mm -hmm. I think of Queen Charlotte as well. And when you were involved in that project, they could yeah. have chosen anybody else, mm -hmm. but they decided this girl from Mabopani, South Africa is going to be the one involved in this project. Would you say that was being, that has been one of your highlights? 
definitely yeah beyond the fact that i was i was so sick i, I was just like oh, how am i gonna do this? it was just one song right mm. but it had to be done so meticulously because of what it represented the 20 years as well right exactly 20 right. years it was 20 years and i would say over and above that the trust that the the the, the producers of the show had and the team but even taking it further, the fact that Alicia Keys herself handpicked me. Sure. I was the furthest from everyone. I was the most stressed because it's visas, it's this and other. But after our first Zoom, I believe, there was just something about me. I don't know what it was that she was like, you're so dynamic. Yeah. I've never met someone like you. And I mean, this is Alicia Keys. She may be in pop, but she's classically trained. Absolutely. She knows that classical music is no nonsense. Yeah. Like, you either get the best of the best. Like in classical music, there's a very puristic, for lack of a better word, approach to everything. So she may be in pop, but she still knew her stuff. So for She's her, a purist. Yes. For mm. her to be like, I want her. It meant a lot. And it was an entire responsibility because I love the song. I love the song itself. So to have to do that with a 74-piece global female orchestra of women of color coming Yo. from all across the world. There were two ladies from Ghana even. Like, imagine how magnificent that is and everything is at my helm. What do you want to see transform and change about the space? Something you are already or do doing already because that's why you work with... A fully black orchestra that's why you work with women that's why you were so excited to be on the project with Alicia Keys with mm -hmm. women from all over the world but when you look at classical music the work that you do when you look at our country when you look at young people in this month of youth month how would you like to see that space transform I would say that it starts with there's a gatekeeping nature that we have with things that I feel like should not be gatekept um, I experienced it a lot as well coming, you know, in, in into this classical music space where I just wanted to learn. You know, sometimes you can just bring someone to a rehearsal so that they can just learn. It does not take yeah. away from, you know, anything from you or whatever. And for most part, I believe that is that people should just be allowed to to given to be given the opportunity to to learn. And we should not gatekeep so much of the information that we have. I make sure that when people message me or um, text me on, on social media platforms, I respond okay. there's sometimes people like I, I, I there's this instrument but i'm not sure am i too old and i'll be like no you can actually do that like this is how you actually need to start these are the things that you the steps that you need to follow so if we do that and collaboration is so important my career has been based on collaborating and juxtaposing the world of orchestra with worlds that you would never imagine. Like Absolutely. I've done Afro jazz, I've done Afro tech, I've done um, this whole imagination of an African orchestra where you see instruments from musicians who don't even read music, right? But then they're playing with this Eurocentric orchestra. So the art of collaboration is so important, especially again, given the, 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 the significance of Youth Month and the 30 years that we're celebrating, we need to be more open to collaborating and um, allowing space where we share information. I feel like your life and your career has been filled with so many lessons, so much mm -hmm. inspiration. I think not only for young people, but for everybody, not only for women as well. So on that note, to get a few more gems from you, I'm going to mention a word and I want you to give me your biggest lesson in that category of the word that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is this like a soft launch 30 seconds? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a, I, I promise you, I told you before you. we started, I'm not giving okay, it's not a And soft usually launch. I, I, I time this, so I'm not yeah. even going to time this. I, I, I want you to okay. just dig in the depths of your soul, right? So first word is biggest lesson when it comes to family. Not just blood. Friendship. Two-way mental health even on the good days money more of it <laughs> <laughs> in all currencies please yes relationships rocking me <laughs> <laughs> collaboration important Africa My beginning and end. I don't know why that came into my mind. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Yes. You know, my continent. beginning. Africa, my end. Mm. And then finally, the biggest lesson that you have learned when it comes to love. Yo. Don't compromise. I think, yeah. It sounds like you don't compromise with everything that you do. 
it, it takes a while to get to that point, right? Yeah. But love is the hardest. Okay. Because I think that that's the one that takes longer. But with work, ah, if someone is not doing what they need to do, even if you've been my best friend, I'll be like, you know what, I have to get someone new actually. Yeah. Not, like in the next 20 minutes, we have to get someone. Because that I, I'm very non-negotiable with. Um, with love, I mean, you're, you're asking a cancerian, like peak cancer, first of July cancer. Girl emotionally romantic and all of that <laughs> in this harsh world. <laughs> so you can imagine I'm not having a great time. You yeah. make it a better place with the music. <laughs> Thank you yes. so much yes. for making it a better place with the music. That is what I and do. And it also sounds and feels like when you play music, it comes from love. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for that. Thank you. That's really where God resides on earth for me. Like, I think I give more of my vulnerability in the music than anything else. Oh, well, mm -hmm. keep playing the music. Offensive Pizza on Five Unscripted. This is Five 